Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Please be seated. And it's great to see all of you today. As uh, we, uh, I've been time. Christmas time is kind of like a, a, a really, a really great drug. And so we slowly ramp you up over Advent. We don't give you too much too soon, and then we slowly take you off. It's um, so we'll have just a little bit of Christmas today, and then we'll have just a little less next week, and then we, that, that should be enough to tamper, temper all of your guys' um, cravings for for Christmas until uh, next year. Uh, this has been a fantastic year for the church, both. Uh, just in terms of ministries and new volunteers, financially the church has done great. Um, this last Sunday, it's, uh, it, we're, we saw so many people here today. Last Sunday, uh, we don't know, we don't have our records go back, but in between the two services, in terms of individual visitors between both, um, we, we had well over 200 plus people, way over that, between the services. It's been a fantastic couple weeks, and so we are glad that you're with us today. We had so many people traveling that we didn't have God's kids. So for those of you who are visitors, normally we let the, we have um, some great things are happening upstairs, but today kids are in here. Don't worry, I have four, so um, I, I don't notice noise, um, unless they're nine, and then I notice immediately. Um, but uh, as we're looking at uh, the year, as we're, uh, again, we're, we've been looking at the gift of Christ for Advent, and then this week and next week, because uh, Christmas technically goes on a little bit longer if you just celebrate the season. Um, uh, this week we're looking at spiritual gifts. So we're continuing at least this week and next week with the theme of, of gifts just for a little bit longer. And uh, as we're, again, but also this is the last Sunday uh, of 2017. And so as you we want to make sure we kind of look back and look ahead just a little bit. So the sermon is going to be a little bit of that spiritual gifts and looking ahead, looking behind. Um, I was I recently saw the, the, the biggest searches of 2017 on Google. Uh, the most searched uh, thing on Google was Hurricane Irma. Uh, the second and the third were the iPhone 8 and the iPhone X or 10, depending on what you want to call it. The most searched person this year was Matt Lauer. Um, in America, that was globally, by the way. In America, the most searched thing was Hurricane Irma. The second most searched thing was Matt Lauer. The third was Tom Petty. The fourth uh, was the Super Bowl. If you don't know, the Atlanta Falcons had a monumental collapse uh, in that game, which freaked everybody out. Um, and then uh, the Las Vegas, shoot, Las Vegas shooting was, was the fifth most searched thing in America. Uh, you can also, if you go to Google, you can type in how to something. The most how to search thing on Google this year was how to buy Bitcoin. Uh, don't do that. Don't don't take this as an, uh, any type of any you know. I do not anything endorse in any way, shape, or form the, the Bitcoin miscellaneous. That's the most searched term. Um, but if you were to look at my devices, the most searched uh, term, most searched thing on my phone is where are Thai food places that deliver, um, uh, and where is the nearest Red Box. So those would be on my uh, search search engines. Um, and as again as uh, as we look back and look forward uh, as who we are and what we're doing. And the, the idea of the gifts are supposed to be for what the church is and what it's going to become. Uh, in particular, uh, when we look at the gifts today is I think one of the greatest misunderstandings that people have is the nature of the church. And if you misunderstand the nature of the church, then the problem with that is you misunderstand the problem that the church is trying to solve. <clears throat> And so we see that the spiritual gifts are here to address the greatest problem, which is our lack of God's glory, our need of God's presence, 
But the church has been designed to, to do something specific to that. And one of the greatest misunderstandings is the wrong opinions of what the church is supposed to be. So with that being said, please pray with me as we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this morning. We pray now, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to our hearts and minds through your word. Reveal it to our innermost places that we may know you better. We pray for all the children today that they too will grow closer to you. All to your glory. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, recapping the, what we're looking at the gifts, we talked about how the gift of Christ brought us not just hope, love, faith, and peace, but a very specific kind that's only found in the gospel. And we really looked at, we tried to look at, um, how the world's definition, what the world can offer, again, is, is trying to help in issues that, in ways that you don't really need help. And we try to hopefully help you see through all the services that... Um, the gospel hope and peace and love that we get is radically different because it addresses specifically what we need most in this life. And today, as we're looking at um, spiritual gifts, I was reminded of the big bad wolf. Um, and remember, there is a scene when, when uh, uh, the Little Red Riding Hood was, was looking at the wolf and was staring at the wolf for a second. He's like, my, what big eyes you have. And, and better to see you, man, what big teeth you have. And, what big ears you have. And, and Red Robin was slowly realizing that this wasn't her grandma at all, it was the wolf. Um, and that reminds me a lot, not that we are big bad wolves, but it reminds me a lot is that um, for many of us, as we're staring at spiritual gifts, we're not putting the whole picture together. We're really not seeing what it's trying to say. So the question I want to start off was this. <clears throat> I start off all the, the questions. is How important are the gifts? How important are spiritual gifts in Scripture? Well, we see both in John 14, where Jesus says, it's, and Paul actually mentioned it today, Jesus says, it's better for me to go because of what's coming. And what's coming is <clears throat> not just the Holy Spirit, but the way the Holy Spirit is going to be working amongst us. It's talking about partially the gifts that are coming. And also uh, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4, we read about how the, the big picture plan Part of the plan that God has unfolded. It doesn't just end on the cross. He goes to heaven and we're still here. Part of this big unfolding plan is how these gifts are supposed to come and be used. So how important are they? They're essential to the story. I'm right now trying to read through all the Chronicles of Narnia with one of my sons and we're reaching the end. Uh, it'd be like taking up one of those last chapters. You say, what happened? I'm missing something. So it's essential to what we're looking at. And in Corinthians in particular, the, the, the issue that Paul is addressing specifically is that the, the Christians in the Corinthian church were elevating some gifts above other gifts, and in essence, elevating some people above other people. And Paul is kind of come in and bring some reality to the situation. He's trying to say, I think by the fact that you're emphasizing a gift over another gift. You're seeking out something else. You're elevating someone else because they're doing something. Tells me that you have a fundamental problem of your understanding of gifts. Just like we said, if you misunderstand the nature of the church, then you have a fundamental misunderstanding of our greatest need. So let's go to start with verses 4 through six. And to get there, I don't know if any of you uh, like to use tools. I love to, to try and use tools. I don't know if any of you ever used a tool and you found out for a long time you're using the tool the wrong way. Uh, uh, for me, the, the tool that, that just seems to confuse me all the time are air compressors. Like, I don't understand how they just, you can attach so many different tools to them. And one time uh, I was given a, uh, I was given these metal things that we were working in the backyard with, and I was, this sand thing had been attached to this air compressor, and I was supposed to use this sand blaster to take away all the rust and old paint. And I was just given one warning, don't aim it at yourself. I'm like, I got it, I got it. And so I'm, I'm doing it, the, the sand blasting, and the paint and the rust is coming off, and it's like amazing, it goes from horrible to brand new, and, but it's coming out so fast you can't see it. And I'm like, 
what does it look like? And so I do what I was very young at the time. Now there was there was a piece of like glass that was protecting us there, but I turned the gun nozzle on myself and I was like, what does it look like? And I started pushing it, and I noticed the glass was slowly starting to disappear. And about one second, just with one second to spare, I realized I was blasting the glass with the sand, and I was about to shoot sand into my face. And I was like, I hope no one saw that. Um, and the same way we're going out here is that. These tools, uh, these gifts are like tools that have a purpose to be used a certain way. So the first thing you know is that they all have the same origin. The first thing Paul wants you to understand is that these gifts that you've totally misunderstood or originate with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. They do not originate with us, with you. Got it? So let's read verse 4 through 6. Now there are various gifts, but the same Spirit. There are, very, there are various um, very varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all and everyone. We see a little tr Trinitarian formula there where it talks about the Spirit, the Lord, uh, and God. Uh, which is, he's not saying the word Trinity, but we see um, echoes of the Trinity right here. And the word there, energy, it's the, the word activities, it's also kind of the word we get for energy. But what he's saying is, point one. Where these gifts come from is the triune God. Get that straight. If that is where they originate from, why are you feeling so special about them? They didn't come from within you. You're taking credit for something that doesn't belong to you. But he's saying, again, don't miss the, the subtlety there that these gifts also have amazing purpose. Service, varieties of gifts, activities. Whether they are literal opportunities, figurative opportunities, official opportunities to use these gifts, in whatever manner they're being used, Paul is saying you need to make sure first and foremost you understand from where, from whom they are coming. If you confuse that. It's like using a tool the wrong way. If in your expression of using what God has given you doesn't point back to the Trinity in some way, then guess what? You're using your gifts in the wrong way. That's where they're supposed to point towards. If in using it, it points to you, points to another human, <coughs> even points to your church, you're using it wrong. They're supposed to point from whom they came from. You could cast yourself in your own life, your own heart. When people interact with you, who are they drawn to? So verses 7 through 10. So the first one was same origin. They had the same origin. Now in verses uh, 7 through 10, it's the same audience. So first thing Paul wants you to know is that all these gifts originate from the triune God. Next, he's saying all of these gifts, all of these gifts have the same audience. And guess what? That audience is not you. <laughs> to work and serve the Lord with the gifts he's given you, it's not to make you feel good about yourself. They're to be used in a specific direction. This reminded me of what was considered the worst ad campaign of all 2017. Uh, Pepsi decided they needed to get on the Black Lives Matter protest train and thought it'd be a great idea to make a commercial using that with people who are protesting. And so they got Kendall Jenner, if you don't know it, that's okay, but she's one of the kind of famous for being famous person. And they said, here's the idea. We're gonna have people protesting and Kendall Jenner is gonna walk out there to the, the police officer who's obviously, there's tension in the brawl for all that and she's just gonna give him a Pepsi and everyone's gonna be happy. No one's gonna have a problem with this. So the ad was released on um, Twitter, and within seconds, people were saying, what? No, you didn't. Pepsi, what? And within seconds, Pepsi said, sorry about that, just kidding, and pulled the ad down, because everyone said, you're trying to say all the problems that we have are real can be solved by giving someone a Pepsi? Maybe if it was a Diet Coke, but a Pepsi, <laughs> no chance. And. Pepsi even came out with a statement saying, when people said, where did, you, where did this idea come from? Who 
who thought this was a good idea? Pepsi said, well, we decided not to use an ad campaign, even though we have money to do it. That came in-house, in a meeting. We just all went together and thought this would be a great idea. So what did they do? They decided to make an ad that they thought would be great for them and totally missed what they were trying to do. In the same way, as you're living your faith, using these things that God has given you to address what we say is the greatest need, who is it you're trying to bless with these gifts? Is it yourself? Then you miss the point. Let's read verse 7 through 10. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. The point here, it's not about the person who has the gift. It's about what you're doing with the gift. So they have the same origin. They all have the same audience. They're, the gifts were designed to bless people, to bring God's glory to believers. Some of these gifts were specifically to bless the church or to bless those who are, to reach out to those who are not part of the church. But the audience is the same. It's people who need more of God's glory. That's the audience that these are supposed to be reaching out towards. And it talks about all these gifts. You need to understand that the way gifts are already about in scripture is there's no one finite list. The list, the, the list of the way God can empower people with gifts changes. And that's what Paul's trying to say. It's not about just these gifts. These gifts, it's not about the gifts. It's about what you're doing with them, who you're sharing them with. But what the Corinthian church was trying to do is emphasize people or these gifts. And Paul's trying to say that's not the point. Yes, some gifts are more charismatic, some more out there than others. But that's not the point of them. The point of them is to display God's glory to those around you. When he talks about utterance, and there's things here that we don't quite know exactly what these gifts look like. Um, this, this utterance of, of wisdom and truth, it's, they say that probably something along the lines of people who are given an, a supernatural ability to explain the difference between worldly wisdom and godly wisdom. To, to explain something from the gospel versus something the world can see. An example would be um, the worldly wisdom about uh, living together before marriage. Is that everyone says it makes perfect sense. But godly wisdom says no, that, that doesn't make sense at all two completely different views of the same issue. When it talks about speaking in tongues or the understanding of tongues, again, that's, the scripture leans some different places what it's talking about, but what you need to see that Paul is saying, why are you even talking about this? The conversation should be is, who is being blessed by these gifts? What is happening with these gifts? That's why he says, when they talk about this thing with tongues, if it's something people can't even understand. What's that's, that's, that's serving anybody? Uh, Chris Austin, a, a bishop, a famous writer from the fourth century, said some of these more charismatic. It's the fourth century. This is a few generations after the apostles. Said it's unfortunate. We have no clue what he's talking about here because most of these these gifts that that he's talking about in terms of this tongue stuff we don't even see anymore. That's back in the fourth century. That that those more extreme ones had kind of ended. Why? Well. Uh, it's from what I see in scripture, what I, I lean towards theologically, is, again, how we see um, scripture a lot is that uh, some of the more charismatic gifts were again for like, uh, if you imagine you're, you're trying to take over a fort. Remember, what is your view of the church? What's the purpose of the, purpose of the church? If you're trying to take over a fort, you use catapults and things to tear down the walls and break into it. Well, once you're in the city, you don't need to use those same tools anymore. As the gospel is spreading to places and people, that had never heard or seen. Different things were necessary, but as the gospel took a foothold in different countries and places, you don't necessarily need the gift of supernatural ability to all of a sudden speak in a language because the people of that language now know the gospel. But again, the point isn't what type of language they're speaking. The point is, what were they doing 
with the language. God can use any means he wants and make it extraordinary. But guess what? God can use not you and still achieve his glory. Because it's not about us. A story I've sure you heard me share before. Um, again, if you're reading this from like it's about me and these gifts, it's about us doing this, not about God and his work. I've witnessed firsthand how God can bypass us if he so desires. When Zinia was living in Istanbul, Turkey, working amongst Muslim women who had not a shred of understanding of Christianity beyond what they had heard someone teach them from the Quran, we've heard stories of how God spoke to those in the Muslim world through their dreams, giving them insight into things they never would have been able to understand or know. In one instance, this person I met that was Zinni was ministering to, it was a woman who said, I need to talk to you, I, have a, I had a dream. Tell me about your dream. In my dream, I was on a shore and God was on the other shore. We were separated by something. And God wanted me to come to him and have wine. That's the story of the Last Supper. She'd never heard that story in any way, shape, or form, in literature or anything. She was having a dream about the fact that she could not have communion with the Lord because there was something blocking her way. That required no gift of man. That required the Lord working. So again, as Paul is teaching about these gifts, <clears throat> what he's telling us, what he's telling them, it's not about you. It's about whom you're taking the gift to. This last <clears throat> verse 11 says this. All, those are all these are empowered by the one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. Or the same goal. So the three sections were um, the same origin, the same audience, and the same goal. This last one, again, it's about not being sidetracked about keeping focus. There have been books written about how easily the heart and the mind can be swayed and get off track of whatever it is you're attempting to do. Remember, I shared with all of you that it'd be a great goal to try and not tweet or email or check your phones within, they say, within 40 minutes before church starts because you're so easily distracted that you'll still be thinking about that when you come into here. But beyond that, even hearts can be easily distracted when you're saying, I'm... New Year's resolution, I'm going to love Jesus. New Year's resolution plus one second. Hey, what's that over there? We are so easily, our hearts and minds can be so easily swayed and distracted. Uh, a real world example, um, uh, when I first got here, uh, our, our Facebook page for our church was designed to let people know how they can find us and, and be drawn to our church. And as I was going exploring the, the pictures that were on our Facebook page, uh, I was confused. I thought maybe I was on the wrong page, but what I kept finding were cat posters of like, hang in there, all over our, our Facebook page pictures. And I realized that the person who had been running the Facebook page loved cats and thought the greatest message about letting the church know where we are is to put cat poster pictures on our Facebook page. So when someone was coming looking for us, they found a cat saying, hang in there. Um, and that is why... Uh, we don't let any of you do anything on Facebook except through Sarah Marlin. Um, uh, we don't want to get sidetracked on what we're trying to do. So what is it we're trying to do? What is it we're about as a church? Well, we believe the point of the church exists. The reason why it is here is about extending the glory of God to hearts and to the world. For those of you who are here saying you don't know Christ, you're confused about Christ, what we're saying, the reason why it exists here is not to make you feel good. It's to bring God's glory to bear on the world. To help you interact with God's glory. To display God's glory. In the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 24, when Moses was finally going to be revealed, the law was going to bring to him, he's talking about what was, what was surrounding them on the mountain was God's glory. When Ezekiel was having a vision about all God was going to do. In Ezekiel um, chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, he's consumed 
and this vision with God's glory. And it famously causes Ezekiel to not be able to talk. The glory of the Lord. We're saying the church exists to be a vessel of extending God's glory. Because we believe the single greatest problem facing humanity is the lack thereof. People don't have God's glory. People don't know God's glory. People aren't chasing after God's glory. His glory only comes with his presence. And all of that was disrupted because of sin. So God has called us, empowered us, given us tools from the Spirit to extend glory, to proclaim his glory, to make his excellencies known. That is what we believe is the greatest problem facing humanity. So as we're looking forward to 2018, and you're thinking about your life, what did you search for most in 2017? What did you want to know most in 2017? Well, our hope is that in 2018, God's glory will be a part of that search in your heart. So the three questions we always end the sermon series on. First, why do we need these gifts? Because they are the tools of the task. These are the gifts God wants to pass. Remember, it's not limited to what we see in Scripture. We believe that these are just Paul's uh, mentioning the gifts. Peter mentions the gifts of what they know about. But we believe that God gives us gifts to reach the time and the people for where we're at. So the gifts we need to reach the people of Northern Virginia are located within the people of God in Northern Virginia. Why? Because God is with us. It's not about the people in the church. It's about the God in the church. We believe God has given us what we need. And how do we get these gifts? Again, as we said scripture, it's completely, completely, totally unexpected way of the Spirit. He knows the gifts we need to do the task he wants us to accomplish. So our gift is to look for areas that are lacking in God's glory. And trust he gives us the gifts to serve there. And last, what are we to do with them? To praise God. Praise God. And bless others. So if you're looking for a heart check for 2018, is the thing you're saying you realize you're lacking most God's glory? Is the thing you're realizing what your family needs most is more of God's glory? That's what these spiritual gifts tell me. When we look back at Little Red looking at the big bad wolf, she realized she was in trouble too late. In the same way, for many of us, if we're trusting in anyone or anything else other than Christ, we too may be realizing it too late. If anything, these spiritual gifts remind me that God is telling us in every way, shape, and form that we are living with the big bad wolf and that Christ has come like the huntsman to chop him down. And he's giving us tools to extend his glory and his grace to all those around us. So don't worry about the gifts. Focus on the gift giver, Jesus Christ. The greatest gift he has given us is salvation for our souls. And then in partner with that, the Holy Spirit will come and give you everything you need to extend his glory to the world around us. That is our hope for 2018 for us and friends. I hope that is your prayer for 2018, that you will crave God's glory all the more and that you will crave to see God's glory spread to those around you and that you use whatever gifts he's given you to praise him and bless others, all to his glory. Please pray with me. Lord God, the greatest need facing humanity is you. We need you more 
than anything else. You created the church, Lord God, to be vessels of your hope, your truth, your light, your righteousness, your holiness. Lord, let us use the tools that you have given us to see your glory extend into hearts of all those around us. All to your glory and praise. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please stand for our last song. <clears throat>